local government financial autonomy. Mark Kinney sets a committee to review Supreme Court judgment. As a former governor of AKT State, Fire Chief says the autonomy won't work. I am Bola of uh, Pits is plus politics. Local government financial autonomy, Supreme Court judgment. Ohio State Governor Sheyima Kinde has constituted a special technical and legal committee to review the recent Supreme Court judgment on local government financial autonomy. Governor Sheyima Kinde had before the closed door meeting berated the, uh, berated the Supreme Court judgment and strategies by the federal government to resolve undue authority over the state and local government administration, thereby causing tension within the nation's polity rather than focusing on other germane issues affecting the nation's economy. Similarly, I identify as a former governor of the state, says the Supreme Court verdict granting financial autonomy to the several and rest of the four local government areas could prove impracticable. Farshe said that even though he does not subscribe to the state governors taking the funds of local government, uh, local governments, it is difficult to separate both, both tiers. He said that the House of Assembly of every state controls the activities and checks the activities of the local government. Last week, the APS court ruled that the federal government should henceforth pay allocations directly to local governments. I believe a lacuna has been created uh, 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 between that Supreme Court decision and the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We all swore, I swore, to uphold the Constitution. But the law is the law. If the law says, uh, uh, if the law is in conflict, it behoves on us to uh, look for our own homegrown solution that uh, will ensure that we have transparency, we can operate, and our people. Because when two elephants are fighting, uh, the grass, will suffer. The United States will get out of this uh, even stronger. We are people that uh, uh, we know what is good for our people. We can run our own affairs. The federal government is not superior constitutionally to the state government. <clears throat> well, they have more resources than the states. I believe a lacuna has been created. Uh, uh. Meeting today was to discuss what happens to your state government, to the welfare of the people, to the development of the people going forward. And committees have been set up, like I said, they have between four to six weeks to look into all the issues that may arise because the judgment will not drive itself at the local levels. The, gov the judgment will not, you know, deliver development by itself. People will still be involved. And that is what the meeting of today was all about. The meeting. Joining us to look at this is the lawyer and public affairs analyst, Tunde Kola Wale. Also joining us is the house leader of, of house leader of councillors at the Unibobo LCDA. Miami, and a lawyer and public affairs analyst, General Dukuli. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, Thank Honorable, you. Honorable Miami, let me start with you. Yes, sir. You are in a peculiar situation. Number one, you are an elected councillor, but the contraption, the local governance institution 
where you function is a stranger to the Nigerian constitution. So you cannot be a beneficiary, either direct, directly or by proxy of this uh, government credit to the, the third tier of government. Well, what would be your response to that? Uh, number one, I, bet, I want to bet to disagree with you that uh, uh, we are uh, we are strangers because we are LCD. If I would uh, understand where you, you are coming from, where you're going to. Reason why is that we should remember that um, the Supreme Court judgment created reasons, the um, the elements of necessity that brought about the creation of the LCDs. If you go back to the history, when our uh, president was the, our governor. He created, uh, he decided to expand the local councils to 57. And the uh, then president, President Obasanjo, took it up as an issue. And eventually, they had to go to the court. And the Supreme Court judgment gave a ruling that the state has the power to create local government. But the process was incoherent. If you remember that statement, incoherent. Well, incoherent. The process uh, was inchoate. Inchoate, yes, yeah, thank you. It was inchoate, and by what it means, it means is that it is not complete. It has not followed, it has not completed this process. And by so doing, that they they can eventually, those uh, 37 local government created out of the 20, uh, 20 can be made to be uh, local council development areas. And I am in that way. I think it, um, it was also given that the 20 local government will have the funds. But don't forget sir, that the LCDAs are also part of those 20 local governments. They were formed from a local government. So they are, we are not strangers, not in any way. We are still okay. in existence. Uh, and don't forget okay. now what I want to put into it is a process that has been run for 21 good years successfully that has been operating even better than some existing local governments at, from other states that have conducted elections in those local governments for um, uh, more than some local governments that are existing in the constitution cannot be called uh, strangers. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, I want to believe that with your very articulate uh, line of uh, defense, uh, maybe I should withdraw the worst stranger and say at best LCDAs as they function in Lagos and other states of the Federation are uh, quintances to the Constitution as a result of the of the pronouncement of the Supreme Court on the litigation by the then Lagos State Government on the creation of the uh, of local local council development authorities as an inquiry entity as pronounced by the Supreme Court. Okay, let me go to Barista Okoli. Barista Okoli, are you there? I'm here, I'm here, I can hear you. Fantastic. Barista Okoli, the Supreme Court, from the responses of the governor of, of Oyo State and the former governor of Ekiti State, may have, may have pushed itself into a cul-de-sac that is uh, that is generally taught against in law schools. That courts must be very careful not to make pronouncements that may ultimately end up being academic. Because we are at a point now where it does seem from the responses of our former Governor Fayoshe and Makinde and which may be the sentiments of many governors that are not talking out now, real politic would or may end up making the pronouncement or the ruling of the Supreme Court quite academic, and the governors may ultimately still just find a way around what is what the Supreme Court is trying to achieve. Your response, sir. The law is dynamic. Stand ground norm of Nigeria is the 1999 Constitution has amended severally over time. 
um, in practice, we've not been practicing the LCD form of governance. It's a new construction that governors brought up. It started from the current president when he was a governor. And we've always had local government system where funds are paid directly to the local government chairman. I think uh, the finance minister then, uh, Dr. Konjo Iwala, used to uh, post on national dailies funds that were paid to each of the 774 local governments in Nigeria. And if you go back to the 1999 constitution, it recognizes only the local governments. It does not recognize LCDAs. So I don't think that what the Supreme Court did was, uh, by their ruling, uh, was an academic exercise. It's something that has been practiced over time. You may not have understood my question very well. My question fundamentally uh, centers around the fact that even if the fund coming from the Federation account goes directly to uh, goes directly to the local government councils. As you have rightly explained that at some point, the former Minister of Finance used to publish funds going to those local government councils. I am saying that given the response of Governor Mackinder, the local government chairman may be hounded to give the funds to the governor or spend the funds as directed by the governor because as Governor Fayoshe uh, uh, stated, real politics says that those governors are holding their offices at the mercy, at the mercy of their governors. The local government chairman are holding their offices at the mercy of the local government chairman. I'll come, I'll come back to you, Barista Okoye. I have another lawyer, uh, Barista Kola Wale. Uh, what would be your response, Barista Kola Wale, to, to that? Hello. Hello. Am I audible? Is Mr. Kolawale still there? Okay. Yes, uh, Mr. Okoye, you may want to take a go, have a go at that. Oh, okay. Uh, in, in continuation to what I was saying, because I wanted to arrive at that, I wanted to first of all say that what the Supreme Court decided is not an academic exercise. It's something that has been practiced over time, and you can still go back to it. Now, coming to the governors, um, after having the, uh, the local government chairman exercising their powers and existence at the mercy of the governors, um, why it's like that is because we don't have a good election system for the local governments. You see a situation whereby elections are conducted for local government and the party in power in that state sweeps all the posts from councillor to all the chairmen. So uh, this is a good step in the right direction, but more efforts should be placed to ensure that there is full local government autonomy. That is to say, ensuring that elections that usher in the local government chairman and the councillors are free, credible, and trusted. That way, development can get to the grassroots. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Okoye. Is uh, uh, Yes, I'm here. I'm here. I, uh, okay, I let me go to let me go back to Honorable of Miami. Honorable of Miami. Let me start. Um, I'm here. I'm all here. Let's start from Your the point of view that uh, it is shocking for me that the federal government took that kind of a case to Supreme Court for education. I say this in all terms of responsibility. And because the people who are serving the responsibility of the federal government to say, have either at once been a governor of the state, they have either been senators, or they have also been local government to examine themselves and others. 
And you find out that when they were governors, and what are they? All the issues that are associated with uh, the monument of the resources of the local government today, the structures of the local government today, elections or democracy at the grassroots level at the local government level and all that. He comes from under their domain. So what has led to the change of art today? I really don't know. And as we say in law, whoever goes to equity goes with a clean hand. It doesn't appear to me that those who took this case to court have a clean hand in respect of this matter. That is my first point for the departure. The second one is that when you look at um, the decision of the Supreme Court and all that, it should appear to me just like uh, one of um, the contribution the contributors have said to be born out of the total of necessity. The Supreme Court does not want the local government um, uh, to try off the way it is going. Because if the local government is not protected, uh, the, 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 the rapacious manner in which the governors are managing those local governments will eventually lead to the of the local government. And whereas you and I should know that the local government have more responsibilities on that day than even the state government, than even the, 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 the federal government. And all that. So, when you look at the uh, uh, chapter 1, part 2 uh, uh, of the Constitution, uh, I think under section 13 there, you will see that uh, what the Supreme Court has simply tried to do is to protect the local government from withdrawing out. Yes. Especially the, uh, on the side of the councillors. I know of like 20, um, let me say 10 or so, 10 or more councillors that are from various parties, Accord. We have councillors that are from Accord party. We have councillors that are from PDP. We even have a councillor that I know that is from Healthy in this legal state, which shows that legal state election has been relatively, let me use the word relatively, um, um, fair to, to a great extent. Now, if we are now talking about the local government election and we want, uh, we want um, to assert our independence. See, your sovereignty is what you are giving to me as an elected person. How many people within our citizenry believe in the local government? We have nostalgia at the local government election level, whereby people don't come out to, 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 to vote. Those be places where people came out to vote, they were able to elect the people of their choice. Of their choice. I can tell you of that of Agege. I can tell you of that of mainland. I can tell you of that of uh, Odiolo. You can go and testify. So when we are coming to make um, um, assertions, we should be able to be empirical about it. Now, going to the, the state um, independent ele electoral commissions, just like um, the, my, my learned uh, fellow um, stated, we, uh, there's not, when it comes to constitutionality, it can never be academical. Don't forget that in the Nigerian constitution, the creation of state electoral commission is, uh, exists very, very prominently in our constitution. So if at all we want to even go about that, we have to go to the National Assembly, whereby the constitution will be uh, amended, and maybe that article will be taken over and be given, and then INEC will be given the power to conduct the election. But it is not as uh, we are saying that if INEC should conduct election, then there will be this um, El Dorado in, a, in the way we conduct election. It is not so. It is about the people who go, who have the nostalgia at local government level to vote. It is about every one of us that are participating. It is about the desperation of some people who feel that under most, their party must have the total control of the state. You see, the, the institutions are there. The players in the institution, how well, um, what, um, as in how sincere are they to, to us? How sincere are they? The players and everybody that are there, how sincere, how committed are we? These are issues that we should be talking about. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Honorable Akwayemi. I want to believe that you too would understand that Lagos may be 
uh, may be a bit of an aberration from what pre from from what prevails across the country. Local council elections have just been held in Adamawa. Local council elections have just been held in uh, one other state of the federation, and the ruling parties in those states carried all the elected offices, including all the councillorship uh, positions. I am not saying your submission about Lagos, but even in Lagos, even in Lagos, the ruling party controls the 57 local government and local council chairmen. Am I right about that, sir? You are right, but I can answer you if you give me the, uh, the opportunity to say something about that. Go ahead, please. Yeah. So, sir, winning election is about putting stru uh, structures down. Lagos State will always have its ways of uh, winning a uh, local government election because many of the people, the parties that are in Lagos State, they only wait every four, four years to come and conduct, uh, uh, participate in presidential elections, um, um, senatorial elections, as of rep as a election, as of assembly and governor election. Once that is won, they go back to, they go back and then they go and sleep. Even most of these parties that we are talking about that, they won elections. Many of the people who won the election were people who were aggrieved in our party, who had to use those parties as a platform to call, uh, to contest for elections so that they can win, and eventually they did. So the uh, the, the chairman winning election is about the structure that is on ground. If you don't have structure in which you are going to use in winning election, and you just wake up tomorrow and you say you want to win election, it might not be possible. Okay, uh, Minister Okoli, we are coming yeah, back. To, we are coming back to my first poser to you now. A uh, real politic, as explained by uh, Honorable Okpayemi, who is a practitioner of the trade, speaks to the fact that uh, as good as the intention of the justices of the law lords, the justices of the Supreme Court may be, at the end of the day, is a function of the point that you made so articulately. That's, you know, how elections conducted by the state independent electoral commissions are somewhat relatively warped when just opposed with elections conducted by INEC. Two, your colleague, the Honorable, has also just accentuated the fact that structure and where politicians use the word structure, they are basically talking about the enormous resources that seems to be, that seem always to be at the advantage of the ruling party where, you know, the governor is the bank roller. So this pronouncement of the Supreme Court, in view of all these realities, what does it amount to? If you want to give us any any form of enlightenment from your position as uh, as a minister, you know, as a minister in the court of justice, especially the Supreme Court. Any form of enlightenment from you? Okay. Um, first, it's a, like I said before, it's a step in the right direction, but it's not the whole step. There are more steps to getting it right. And what do we do? First of all. We have to get our election system to be very okay. Our election, even the ones for National Assembly, even the ones for State Houses of Assembly, even the ones for governorship and presidential, we've not gotten them right. And it will trickle down to the local government elections. But what, do, what am I trying to say? When people are done with voting for these elections, like I said before, there is a sense of disillusionment that affects them when it comes to coming out to vote for um, lo the local government council elections. And this peters off and extends to 
how people view the local government councils. In fact, as, as a matter of fact, um, where I live in Abuja, most of us are not. We don't even feel the impact of the local governments. So it shows that for people to understand and appreciate the local government system, a lot of our institutions have to be strengthened. And what am I trying to say? Um, the, uh, the institutions that are used for elections, we are talking about the electoral commissions, we are talking about the security agencies, that is the police, the military, and the other the parliamentary agencies. We are talking about the individuals, those who are caught messing up with the electoral system, are supposed to be punished adequately. It will serve as a deterrent. So when people know that their votes will count and their votes are actually counting, they will participate more in local government council elections and they will hold their councillors and their chairmen, uh, they will hold them more responsible than they will even hold their governors because these people, these chairmen, these councillors are people that they can see on a regular basis. They attend the same church. They sit down in the same area. In fact, they possibly read at the same newspaper stands. So when you see that you can feel, you, you know your councillor, you know your chairman, and you can feel what they are doing, then you can give them feedback on how to get things right. And this is how development will trickle down to the average Nigerian. Thank you. I, I still tend to hear you speaking to the idealism of the Constitution, how it ought to be. And for me, you seem to be deliberately speaking about uh, the reality of what prevails. And that's maybe because you live in Abuja, because relatively in Abuja, INEC conducts local government elections in Abuja. That's number one. Number two is that Abuja does not have a peculiar political phenomenon akin to the governors at the level of the states. And most times, we have also discovered historically that the opposition parties tend to often win the local government elections in Abuja. But that's not what usually prevails at the level of the state. So I'm sitting here, sir, Barista Okoli, this is for you again, thinking you may not be addressing the realities that instructed the litigation by the incumbent or the general who see for the pronouncement of the law laws on the autonomy uh, on the financial autonomy of local governments. Am I Am I right, or do you disagree with me? Um, the financial autonomy of of the local governments have been hampered a lot by governors. But I want to go back to what you said about um, living in Abuja. Uh, Abuja, to an extent, is how politics should be played. You hardly see. Uh, high level of um, political bleeding edge, um, you, um, clashes and all that. Not because there are no humans in Abuja, but because there is a high level of uh, security presence. Now, coming to the financial autonomy that you talked in your, your last question. First, if a governor being the leader of a state determines who contests what and when. There will be a lot of patronage when it comes to handing over the compass of local government to him in order to ensure that at the end of the election cycle, the person is still in good books of the governor for future recommendation to other offices. But when we get our elections right, when we don't need to get blessings from personalities, from principalities. It will go a long way in ensuring that our local government system works. 
And as Nigerians, we really need our local government system to work for. Because the local government systems are the drivers of development. There is no country that is developed that their local government system, be it county or whatever terminology is called, it's not, they, those systems are not working. You may say that it's a bit of idealism, but um, before things got worse to this level, I know for a fact, because I lived in Imo State during that time, I know for a fact that local government elections were better contested, better handled than they are being handled now. It's just an erosion of values in our institutions that is making the local government elections to look like a buy, where the ruling party has been granted by to determine who gets what and all that. You see an election having 90% return in favor of the ruling party, no matter how bad the party must have fed at the state level, they are still accepted. And when you talk about structure, finally, when you talk about structure, structure can be good or bad. Where people are being attacked when they go for rallies and all that, all in the name of you don't have structure or you don't have backup and whatever technology is used, it deters the good people from coming into politics. So structure, like is being said, can be a structure of criminality, can be a structure of fomenting trouble or creating an arrest that will scare people away. And scaring people away from the political process is a form of rigging, is a form of uh, electoral malpractice. And we need to arrest all these malpractices in order to move forward as a society. Thank you. Honorable Akwayami, are you still there, sir? Very well, very well. Uh, with a degree of humility from my side, I want to submit to you, I want to humbly submit that Lagos is the perfect example of, Lagos is the perfect example that speaks to the, the vacuity, the academic nature of the pronouncement of the Supreme Court. Why am I saying that? There are only 20 constitutionally recognized local government authorities in Lagos. And yet, real politic-wise, empirically and practically, there are 57 contraptions reflective of local governance in Lagos. And within the context of the reality in Lagos, even if funds were to come from the Federation account to the 20 constitutionally recognized LGAs, the chairman of those LGAs cannot afford to want to assert holding to them because there must be a peculiar arrangement for those funds to be shared by the LCDAs that were passed from the 20. And here we are talking about financial autonomy when no local government chairman in a peculiar scenario like Lagos, like Oshu, like some other states where LCDAs have been created, they are ever say they want to hold on to any fund coming directly from the traditional account to the post of the local government authority if they want to still be in politics. Honorable Opayami, as a Lagos politician, an elected officer of a local government entity, how would you respond to that? Uh, first and foremost, I want to ask you, sir, as you have said, there are 20 local governments that are recognized within the, uh, in the constitution. Are you telling me that the areas within the 37 LCDs are not 
anywhere in the map of Nigeria? Or are they not part, sorry, that, I'm, I'm, just, I'm coming bit by bit. Are they not part of those 20 local governments in their various um, areas of demarcations? Yes, sir. Do we or can we agree that when the funds are emanating, when the funds are coming from the federation account, going to Lagos for under the acting of local government funds, they will only go to 20 entities? Do we agree on that? Uh, I'm I'm not going to speak to that because I'm not the chief, I'm not the attorney general of Lagos State. Mm -hmm. So I have limitations to where I can answer questions. Being um, a, um, a, a public servant, so I won't be able to answer that on here. But what I know is this. One, don't forget that the Supreme Court, by its judgment made far back in 2005, recognizes that there are 37 LCDs in Lagos states. And it is still the same Supreme Court that has given a judgment that, okay, go and pay money directly to the local governments. Now, I know lawyers when we want to play, when they want to play with words. The issue of whether an LCDA or a local or a local government should be part of the uh, of the payment has not arose at all. Not it, people are the ones bringing it up for public discussion and things like that. So it is now meant for the people who are professionals in the learned field to take it up and ask of, okay, what implication does it have to do with what is on ground? But we must understand one thing. There's no reason why we should paint something that is black, then we paint it uh, the purple. The LCDs that we are talking about has been in existence uh, as part of those 20 local governments, they deserve uh, rights to, uh, to enjoy from those allocations in any way, in any form, because they are part of the development. And also, I still I still maintain my, my ground that a, a process that has been successful, even more than the existing local governments that you are talking about, that has been successful, that has been existing, that has been functioning, in every way in which a, an ideal local government should, uh, uh, should, uh, should perform, should not be jettisoned in any manner in, or in any form. What we should be talking about moving forward now is how those 37 local governments, if you want to talk about it, when many local, uh, many states created the LCDs and General Obasanjo came out that he is uh, not going to accept it. It was only Lagos State that stood his ground. And today, the story is a success story. I can tell you, as a counselor, just to go back to what my, my brother talked about, it is not every local government that you don't feel the impact. For example, I can boast of what I have done in my own, in my own world. I can tell you of projects that I have done. I can tell you of what our governor, someone who has made all the counselors in the 57 local governments to go and do in their various wars as wars projects. I can tell you uh, rhetorically that there is, a, there is a, an instruction given by the Speaker of Lagos State that every year a councillor must have two war projects being done at their various wars. These are okay. impacts. Okay, Honorable Apoyemi, Honorable Apoyemi, I can really empathize with you uh, because, in many respects, you are speaking to an idealism of what should be, which in a peculiar way uh, you believe is happening in Lagos. But I can also authoritatively tell you that when funds are leaving the Federation account coming to Lagos, only 20 local government authorities are recognized. I know that because of the peculiar nature of, of Lagos, Having all the 57 chairmen belonging to a particular party, the understanding to distribute the money in such a way that it speaks 
to equity amongst the RGAs and the LCDAs is a fantastic contraption. As a negotiator myself, I am happy as a negotiator who also believes that Lagos ought to have gotten more than 20 RGAs, and indeed, there should be a mechanism that should recognize the RGAs. I feel you, but my brother, reality is reality when those sons are leaving foundation account, they are coming just to 20 designated uh, addresses. I uh, agree with you. That, that, I, that, I agree. Takes me, that takes me to the barista now. I, I'll come back to you. We still have an opportunity. Uh, barista, I'll call you. Now, yeah. Uh, just like I had earlier stated to you that we may be speaking to idealism at the expense of reality, I need to take you in another direction now. Governor Makide is of the opinion that we have an ability federalism or an ability federation. That in all the federations that he knows, there are only two entities, central and federation units. That the situation in Nigeria is peculiar and that it is robbing the states the benefit of effectively administering its territory. That the local government that the federal government is becoming uh, a meddlesome interloper in how the states govern themselves, wanting to use the local government authorities as a disruptive force when ordinarily the federal government should be facing the challenges of righting all the enormous wrongs of the economy. What will be your response to that from Governor Makide? Um, uh, respectfully, I disagree with uh, the governor on these grounds. First, the economy cannot move further if we don't get our governance right. And our governance starts from the local government system. First, um, public health care centers are supposed to be the sole preserve of local governments. You mean primary health care centers, PSCs? Yes. Yes, and I agree. A lot of, and a lot of them are not functioning well because the local governments are not functioning. Most of the local governments are not functioning. So uh, whatever that is happening at the local government level, it affects the common man in the, in the streets, and it, it in turn reduces back to the economy. Now, Another angle where I disagree with it is that in the United States of America, for example, you have the federal government that is at Washington, D.C., then you have the states, and then you have the districts, and they all work hand in hand together. No one is interloping or overshadowing the other. They have their duties spelled out, and they carry it effectively. Uh, like I said before, you have counties in the United Kingdom. Even in Switzerland, you have canyons. Most of these countries don't even have states. What they have is the federal governments and the local authorities because they understand that development, economy, whatever good indices cannot go well without the input of the local government councils. Whatever, uh, no matter the affiliation or the name, it bears, but the impact of the local government councils can never be overemphasized because uh, it's just, just an yeah. observation that I want you to take away and verify outside uh, this program. The Constitution of the United States of America recognizes the Federation as the relationship between, between Washington and the states, counties, uh, counties are formed at the expense of the state in America. They are not they are not recognized constitutionally as a third tier tier of government. In Switzerland, as you have alluded to, 
the federation is between the center and the cantons. There is nothing that defines a third tier at the level of the cantons as a result of what Ashwa Diwala Ametinumbu proved when he was governor of Lagos, he should be in comment on the states for effective governance to dynamically adjust local government structures with a view to making sure that people are effectively served. So we need to get those facts straight. Uh, Honorable Akwayemi, Yes, sir. Your concluding remarks, given the fact that uh, we are where we are now, and it does seem that uh, Lagos, the father of modern Lagos, is the incumbent president. He was the governor who pioneered the machinations of creating extra constitutional entities for effective governance at the local government level. And yet, this judgment is coming during his era as the president, and Lagos is in the peculiar form, a shape that it is in now. What say ye to a political like you functioning in an entity that is part of the 37 created, that is not totally recognized by the Constitution? First and foremost, what I know about our president is that he has always believed in the local government system working. And that was the reason why he felt that 20 local government was not effective for Lagos State when he brought about the ideas of creating 37 LC, uh, LCDs along with the 20 local governments. Presently now, we know what is um, going on, what is trending in our country, insecurity, um, food insecurity here and there. Sir, if we want security in our land, the local government system must work. And I'm sure the man who knows where to put and how to remove is the man that is there. He understands that if we are talking about security, we must be sincere with the ideal way in which the local government must be run. Because why do I say so? If in my area, there are going to be, uh, if we want to know where the bad boys are, we have insecurity will start, it will start from the world. The counselor of the world would understand that, okay, so some guys are gathering there, and it can, there can be a cry out. And that's why Lagos is working. Every month, we always have a police uh, uh, peace and security meeting at, uh, at the local government level, where all the security households uh, uh, will be represented. And then we talk about where areas where we uh, there are possible uh, say, security threat, uh, security threat, and actions are taken immediately. But in local governments whereby they are locked, maybe once in every week, they come in and they just do what they want to do, they go. How do you expect that security will be effective there? And these are the things that this man understands. That if you want to talk sorry, sir, before I finish, sir, if you want to talk about food in, food insecurity. The, 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 the local government can actually facilitate to see how um, uh, agriculture can be, uh, can be successfully uh, uh, manifested in, 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 in the nations. For example, if you give all every, each, every local government chairman a mandate that, look, you must have, each local government must be ready to have a farmland whereby they produce one or two things. You can imagine how uh, food insecurity will be taken off. So what I'm trying to say is that, but Ashwa Dibola Ahmed Tinubu understands that local government is the main- My brother, <laughs> my, my brother don't let's speak idealism. Reality is that in many of the metropolitan LCDs and local government areas of Lagos, daily people are robbed on the streets. They have counselors in those streets. You know, people sir, are wrong in, in traffic. You that question, sir. Even and when you don't, and you don't even have the land. Let me sir. give your colleagues the opportunity to wrap up. So we, we, you, can you just, so that, the, 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 you see, if you, if 
they are anybody that are robbing robbers. The, the, the robbers most times don't get scot free. Let me give you, the, there was the time during the answers, uh, um, um, uh, riots. The guys who in my area went to cut away these uh, properties in uh, in the. I'm not talking uh, about answers. I'm talking of normal days. Yeah, I'm just normal days. days about the, the boys who cut away with the properties, I went to their houses to collect it and return it back to the police. What I'm trying to say is that we know the bad boys, we know ourselves. We are the major. And then, uh, then, then it's about time. Then it's about time. Councillors and chairmen got more effective because I'm basically telling you now that we daily hear of reports of bad boys functioning seemingly at large on some of the arterial roads of Lagos, and they seem to be getting away with it, my brother. Reality in Mombasa. Yeah, more because what you are saying, sir. What I'm saying, the, the, the insecurity is different from in, uh, criminality. See, there will be, there's nowhere, even in America, as uh, we think it should be, there are some criminalities. But see, insecurity is when you have, the, 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 see, insecurity will eventually come okay. when let, let me let, let me let your colleague, let me let your colleague also have his uh, closing shot. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, Barrister Okoye. Your closing shot, please. Uh, I believe that the local government system has to be revitalized, has to be get to a stage where it will be working. The common man can feel it. That way, it's the only way that we can get Nigeria right on the right track. That is the way we can solve a lot of the issues in our country. I agree to an extent with. Uh, Honorable Bayemi, um, security is a local issue. The local government, if they are working, they will work well to ensure that security in that local government is optimized. Healthcare should be a local government issue, yeah. at least at the level of private, uh, um, primary healthcare centers. Education is equally something that the local government should handle because they know where the schools are they know how the schools are by, by Tarkoye, by Tarkoye, i have to wrap it up at this juncture i understand you i fully agree with you and apply me on the idealism of some of the points you are making but you will agree with me by Tarkoye, that if security should be the primary responsibility of the local councillors and the chairman and the state governors, we have a peculiar federation where all, all agencies bearing arms are answerable to one man only at the centre. The governors, the governor's ability and the chairman and councillors like a pioneer's ability to deploy the powers of coercion to control criminality in their in their constituencies are limited. You see, that, that is why some of us want to believe that the pronouncement of the Supreme Court, the intentment is good, but the reality is that it is academic. Thank you, gentlemen, for blessing the show. We look forward to having you some other time. Time is far spent. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. I want to say thank you to you, members of the Thank audience. You very much. For today, my name is Steve.